In this installment, we're going to be going over the NBA playoff bets for Sunday, April 28th. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chef D, and I'm here to give you the winning ingredients for our April 28th NBA playoff bet slate we got going on. But before I deep dive into that, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MetsNitchJetsD. Don't forget about that TikTok at Chef underscore D91. And don't forget about the Patreon. Right now, we're at the homepage of the YouTube channel currently at 4.67 thousand subscribers our goal is 10,000, and we are well on our way of moving towards that goal thanks to you guys guys continue to show that love and support if you're already subscribed like and comment that helps the youtube algorithm so we can reach a broader audience and if you're not subscribed you're missing out right now on a great community on youtube and on patreon so sign up Click that subscribe button right now and join the community that we are building right now. All right. If anyone wants the Patreon, those premium picks are provided down below. As of right now, the picks from the yesterday's video are two for three right now. We only missed on the Pelican game. The Thunder came through and they beat they beat up the Pelicans in that one. We are just waiting on hopefully the Lakers, the Lakers, we had Lakers plus three and a half. If they can hold on for the second half, they came out strong. And let's see if they can get a win here finally against the Denver Nuggets. So if you want the premium picks, remember, like I said, link provided down below. First game up on the slate for Sunday, New York Knicks going up against the Philadelphia 76ers here. Two versus seven matchup. And right now, the series is 2-1 to one with the Knicks in the lead. Currently, it's the second game for the 76ers at their home stadium. Right now, looking at the odds, minus 190 on the money line for the 76ers with the comeback of the New York Knicks at a plus 155. The point spread was similar to the last game at a plus, uh, well, at four and a half for both sides. And the total at 209 and a half, all right, for the public bet percentage. 83% of the bets, 64% of the money towards the Sixers' money line. For the point spread, 61% of the bets, 60% of the money towards the 76ers to cover. And for the total, 90% of the bets, 89% of the money towards uh, the over 209 and a half. For the injury report here, the New York Knicks, we are only waiting on news for Mitchell Robinson. Uh, he got pretty banged up in game number three. Uh, dealing with Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid was acting a little bit crazy in game three, but luckily he didn't get ejected. He got the the superstar treatment, and they just gave him flagrant ones. But Joel wasn't getting some calls in some certain scenarios, and he was having a little tantrums. But, hey, I don't want to hear it from the New York fans, man. All the calls that you were given in game one and two, let's, let's calm it down now. I don't want to hear you complaining about what's going on in Philly what it was the same buffoonery that was going in in game one and game two let's calm it down let's be fair here all right so Knicks just Mitchell Robinson Q tag 76ers clean bill of health uh, they're gonna be fine here with the same guys coming for game number four all right so in game three that was an 11 point win by the Philadelphia 76ers which I thought was the better team. And we saw them impose their will on this team here. And it was Joel Embiid. All right. A lot of question marks here. of uh, Joel Embiid's healthy. Is he not? He came through and put up 50 points, eight rebounds, four assists, and a block. He hit five threes. This man is, was a machine. It was He was on a whole entire level. They can't stop him. This is what I'm talking about. And now you have Mitchell Robinson questionable. If he doesn't play, then you're going to be relying on Precious Ochoa to get solid minutes as, as, as power forward. That's not going to bode well when you have to deal with Joel Embiid. And they're not, Nick Nurse is not afraid to continually use at play after play. We're going to go with the, what works. He's going to get fouled, which you've been complaining about, and he's going to go to the free throw line. Rinse and repeat. So that's what's going to happen here. 
We're going to be going with the Philadelphia 76ers here at home. At home. Love them on the money line at a minus 190. If you want to play with the point spread, do you think this game will be a little bit closer? I think 76ers flex their muscle. I think they cover that four and a half and give me the over 209 and a half. When Philly's at home and things get cooking, then they got Joel Embiid scoring his points, Tyrese hitting his threes, maybe Tobias Harris comes up clutch. Kelly Oubre becomes a big factor. Cameron Payne off the bench has been hitting threes as well. That over is going to hit in that spot, all right? So give me the over 209 and a half. Next game up, we have the LA Clippers going up against the Dallas Mavericks. This is the 4-5 matchup here in Dallas for game four. Looking at the current odds, the Dallas Mavericks are um, home favorites here. Minus 225 on the money line with the comeback of the Clippers at a plus 180. The point spread at a five and a half for both sides. And the total set at 208 and a half. All right. For the public bet percentage, 80% of the bets, 87% of the money on Dallas. Uh, for the point spread, it's leaning towards the Clippers. 51% of the bets, 58% of the money towards that plus five and a half. Uh, for the total. 74% of the bet, 71% of the money towards the over 208 and a half. For the injury report here, Kawhi Leonard for the LA Clippers. He's still on that minutes restriction. Um, he only played around 25 minutes in game number three. Uh, so they're going to be monitoring his minutes. He should be able to play in game four. Just stay tuned to news. That's why I provide that link down below for RotoWire. So you can click on that and make sure. Kawhi Leonard is going to be in this game on Sunday. All right. For the Dallas Mavericks, Luka Doncic got a little bit banged up in game three. He's questionable, but he's fine. Uh, that's just one of the tags there. He is going to play in game four. Don't expect Luka Doncic to miss this game. All right. Tim Hardaway, he got injured in a previous game. He's out. He's out for a while. All right. Now, what did we see in game three between these two teams? Heated altercations. P.J. Washington. Terrence Mann, Russell Westbrook, Luka Doncic. They're going back and forth. Very, very heated series here, which I think this is going to go far. This, I think this could go seven between four and five. These are very talented and capable teams here, even with uh, not 100% Kawhi Leonard. But the main factor for game number three here was the turnovers. Very sloppy basketball play that we saw from the LA Clippers. The veteran team here, it was shocking to see. They had uh, they gave up 12 steals. The Dallas Mavericks had 12 steals. Dallas Mavericks had seven blocks against them, against them. And the total turnovers for the LA Clippers was 19, all right? Sloppy basketball play was the key reason that they lost in that second quarter. The really this game was close. The only difference was that second quarter where the Clippers did not show up at all. So in this particular environment here, game four, I do expect a better effort from the L.A. Clippers. Um, a lot of public is on uh, the Dallas Mavericks here. They are slightly the better team, obviously because of Kawhi Leonard's not being 100%. That hurts the fact that you got this great trio, but you just can't get things right. So I think the best value on the board is the plus uh, money here on the LA Clippers at plus five and a half. If you can get a six, if you can find a six, I feel very, very comfortable. Maybe you want to bump it up to six. That's fine. Six and a half. Take the points here in this game that I think is going to go back and forth uh definitely take it down to that fourth quarter um we've seen um in game number two where it was a tightly contested environment there i think it goes back to that um there between these two teams especially Kawhi back in the mix could be a factor um if you want to take the dallas mavericks money line at that minus 200 you can but i feel like i just give me the points and let me see how this falls okay between these two teams in game number four here. I do expect the Mavericks to win, though. But I think that the points is just safe. I don't expect them, the Clippers to get blown out. So, points, point line for the Clippers. And for the total points here, give me the under 208 and a half. We've seen in, uh, in these games here between these two teams, defense has been at a forefront. Uh, bat shooting as well. 
So I'm going to be leaning towards the under. I'm going to go against the green here and lean towards the under between the Clippers and the Mavericks. Let's move on to the third game. Third game on the slate, Milwaukee Bucks here going up against the Indiana Pacers. Um, and the, the Bucks are in shambles. It's it's looking really bad right now for the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, before I even get into the line, the reason why the line is like this, minus 400, nine and a half, is because the injury to Dame Lillard with the Achilles. So it wind up happening in the second quarter. He's He was trying to play on it as a decoy. You know that that's just, you're making it worse at that point. So looking at the line right now, this right, like I said, this is the 3-6 matchup. Pacers lead the series 2-1. to one. Pacers money line at minus 400 with the comeback of the Milwaukee Bucks at a plus 310. Point spread at a nine and a half on both sides. Then the total is set at 216. All right, public bet percentage 79% of the bets towards Indiana, but 58% to, of the money towards the Bucks. All right, point spread 72% of the bets and the money towards the Milwaukee Bucks to cover nine and a half. That is very strange to me. Um, and the total 91% of the bets, 80% of the money towards the over 216 and a half. All right, injury report here for uh, the Milwaukee Bucks. Like I said, Dame Lillard is not going to play. Giannis Antetokounmpo is not going to play. Chris Middleton will play. So this is going to be Chris Middleton, Patrick Beverly, Bobby Portis, and Brooke Lopez. Okay, that's going to be the guys, Malik Beasley. Now, looking at this spread here, I really want to go against the public here. I think this is the spot um where this is the blowout this is like the celtics kind of sort of but i think this spread at nine and a half it's for a reason and they're going to cover it especially with the key factors here being missed out with Giannis and with dame lillard uh people trying to get sneaky and trying to take you got 58 percent of the money on on the box is that is, it, is that the sharp money no no, no, no. the sharp money is the the, the 79 here we got some we got some scoundrels down there at the 58% trying to get this big plus 310 here. And you got heavy public favor favoritism here on the point spread at 72%, almost 80%. I, I'm going to go with the Pacers across the board. Give me them money line. Give me them to cover the spread. And I love the over 216 and a half. If you can't keep up with the Pacers, they are going to burn you, and they're going to be willing to put up 130, 140 even, just like it's the regular season. But it was already an issue for Milwaukee Bucks defensively, and now you don't have an, a guy that can score. You just got Chris Middleton. He, give me the Pacers. Last but not least, we have the Minnesota Timberwolves here going up against the Phoenix Suns in game four. They are in a desperate situation. The Phoenix Suns down three to zero, and they are home underdogs here going up against the Timberwolves in game four. Looking at the line, plus 105 on the Suns with the comeback of the Timberwolves at a minus 130. This is a pick em game here with the point spread set at a one and a half, and the total is at 210 and a half. For the public bet percentage here, public all over the Timberwolves, okay? 64% of the bets, 83% of the money on Minnesota there. Uh, for the point spread, 82% of the bets, 85% of the money all over the Timberwolves. And for the total, 93% uh, of the bets and 91% of the money on the over 210 and a half, all right? Um, for these two teams, we're going to be waiting on news, mainly for Phoenix Suns, Grayson Allen. Uh, we're gonna, he, right now, he is questionable for game number four. Uh, they do need him back, but I, I don't think Eric Gordon is the answer. So um, Minnesota Timberwolves are fine. Kyle Anderson was able to play in the previous game. Um, if anything, he might have a Q tag and just be a little bit questionable. We'll see if he's able to practice um and be ready for game four but he did play in game number three all right so the key factor here with the timberwolves and the suns in game three which was a must win situation and they got blown out by 17 points was a very laissez-faire lackadaisical defense from the phoenix suns they did not care they were on the court and just there they were it was it was the Timberwolves shooting threes while the Sun were shooting twos. 
And the threes didn't fall for the Suns until it was desperate, desperate times and late in the fourth quarter. You that can't happen. You're not playing defense. You're you're shooting twos, and then you're allowing uh, 13 threes to be hit on you by Mike Conley. Like Mike Conley, McDaniel's. It was just random guys. Hit Nas Reed hit a three. Horrible defense from the senior sons. They have to. Can't, they, I, do you care? You want to go? You, you want to get swept? Do you want to get swept? One thing Frank Vogel needs to do is play Josh Okaji. You need somewhere, someone in this starting five to have some sort of defensive mentality. All right, that's going to be. Uh, maybe it's a spark plug. Maybe he ignites a couple steals and a couple fast breaks. Um, Josh Okaji, Okaji for me. Um, if he's in the starting lineup, that's going to bode well um, for the Phoenix Suns because uh, they need a defender out there to stick on Anthony Edwards at least, at least, okay? Um, in this desperate situation, I'm going to be leaning on the veterans here just like I did with the Lakers. I'm going to be going with the Phoenix Suns. I understand what happened in the first three games. It was embarrassing. This team, to have these three stars and to spend over $150 million on them and they lose the first three games against a team you dominated already in the regular season is despicable. Uh, but I'm going to have to go with the trends and with the fact that these are veterans here. KD, Booker, Bill. Can they get me one game? That's the question. I believe they can. So we're going to be taking the Phoenix Suns on the money line. We're going to, uh, obviously, for the underdog here, you can take that plus one and a half if you want to feel safe. And I love the over two ten and a half in this game. If anything, it's going to be a high-scoring environment between the Timberwolves and the Phoenix Suns, definitely in this spot. All right? So those are going to be my selections for the Sunday slate. Let me know in that comment section down below. What are your thoughts on each and every game? Maybe you got some props that I need to know about. Enlighten me down below and we can debate. I'll be back with another video very soon, guys. And peace out.